Um, I'm here to really talk about technology, specifically how technology will save us from the zombies. Um, truth be told, I have more than one reason to be nervous standing up here, not just speaking about zombies, that's kind of weird, but when it was announced that I was going to come here, um, I was warned not to. See, I'm not a doomsday prepper, but there are those out there who uh, would prefer to be the only survivors. But this is an important topic, and uh, even though I've been warned, you guys need to know what's going on. So what do flat, TV, flat screen TVs have to do with the zombie apocalypse? They're really more about the technology, right? Um, flat screen TVs taught me an important lesson about technology, and that's that you can't always count on when it's coming. Um, as a kid, growing up in the 80s, I had um, a neighbor who was a graduate student at Johns Hopkins University. He was a computer science major. And um, you know, I was about 12, 13 years old, and I loved to talk about technology, especially technology of the future. And uh, we would talk about these flat screen TVs that could hang on your wall. And this is in the 80s, this is like maybe 1982. And he's telling me about TVs so thin, they're gonna be picture thin and crystal clear. And I couldn't wait, you know, I thought this sounded like it was a couple years away. I think I got my first HDTV for my family room like four years ago. <laughs> so you can't always count on when the technology is coming. But um, those conversations with, uh, with Tom taught me a lot about technology. Um, you know, he had a great passion for tech and, and really got me going. And um, I think it's important to share your passions for whatever it is that you're passionate about, be it technology or beer making. <laughs> or guitars, or being on stage. We used to talk about video games, too. Video games definitely got me into technology, and um, was amazed that I could possibly program these things one day. Um, I, you know, playing Atari in the 80s as a kid, and you know, having Tom talk about computer science, and uh, it really got me excited about it, so let's Let's figure out how we can use technology to stay ahead of the zombies, especially technology of the future. But it, it does come with a warning. You can't always count on it because um, it can be unpredictable. And so are deadlines, launch dates, and things like that. One thing is certain, the zombies are coming. All you need to do is tune into the local news. I'm sure there's everybody today has been asking me about different face-eating episodes that have been reported la lately on the news. and. I'm um, not sure if it's always bath salts that are the cause, but, um, but don't worry. We're going to figure out how to stay ahead of these guys. So I'm not sure if it's going to be bath salts or some kind of weird mutation. Um, you can probably count on science doing something maybe to mess it up. It could be mad cow run amok. I don't know. Flying cars, though, would be a really cool way to stay ahead of the zombies. Um, it's probably not going to happen anytime soon. But again, when I think of technology of the future, I always think about flying cars for some reason. You know, I used to think about the year 2000. There's going to be flying cars. Um, perfect getaway for a zombie apocalypse, but, um, you know, I'm kind of disappointed that they're not here. And of course, you know, I mean, a jet pack would be the perfect way to escape a bunch of zombies because if you couldn't get in your flying car and take a few people with you, you could at least throw in a jet pack probably not cause as much of a scene, you know, as people are running towards the car. You can just kind of scoot away in a jet back. I think it's not fair that, you know, James Bond got his in 1965. Um, but, you know, we all have to live with it. So what do you need to survive? Well, the first thing you should do in the zombie apocalypse when it hits is get to a big box store. Like, they're all over the place. They have groceries, they have guns, bats, technology. You'll probably find a uh, smart smartphone or two there. Um, cell phones would be a really good way to stay ahead of, of these zombies. Now, there's nothing really future tech about this. A lot of people in the audience probably have this phone in their pocket. Um, but wireless networks during the apocalypse might not be um, reliable. But text is often more reliable than, than wireless networks can be. And um, 
even during Hurricane Katrina, when cell phone networks were down, people were able to text and get help. So texting and a smartphone are definitely good ways to stay ahead. You know, if you have a smartphone, you could probably see on the map where the pockets of zombies are. You could avoid them. It'd be a good thing to have in your pocket. Now, cell phones aren't always really convenient. I mean, you have to look down at them, touch them, interact with them. Sure, they're Siri, and you can hold in the, the button, and she comes on and tries to answer your questions, but, you know, you're running. Zombies are chasing you, so you can't always fumble with, with things. Um, Google is working on Project Glass. They will not announce a launch date, much like my flying cars and HDTV. Um, but the, when it does come out, and it will someday, uh, this will be a great way to kind of get to the data stay away from the zombies. Uh, you have a little heads-up display on your glasses and um, kind of let you know where your friends are, where the zombies are. You can avoid them. It can give you information about your environment. And uh, it's definitely a good way to stay ahead. Now with all this tech, you're going to need a way to keep everything powered up because we can't rely on the power grid. We may have a smart power grid. It might stay up. But if it doesn't, solar chargers. They're definitely a must. It could provide everything that we need. You'll also need a really good getaway because probably not going to have a jetpack, probably not going to have a flying car. I know I keep harping on the flying car, but I really wanted one in the year 2000. <laughs> I just thought like that was the magical year. It's all going to happen. Um, this is a two-door diesel electric car um, by BMW. It's a, it's a concept car now. They have built one. Um, I'll show it to you. There it is on the road. This thing is more than good looks. It, uh, it has a fuel efficiency of 63 miles per gallon and a 0 to 60 time of 4.8 seconds. Not bad for an electric car. It's probably a really cool way to stay away from zombies. It's lightweight. It has a heads-up display because you need to keep your eyes on the road and the zombies at all times. It's very aerodynamic. It's efficient. And... I don't know if you can see the glass on the top of the car. Pretty much from the hood all the way to the back of the car is all glass. So you can definitely survey the landscape and stay away from the beasts. Now, gas stations and, and electricity might become scarce in a zombie apocalypse. So it's always good to consider other forms of technology, like bicycles. Um, this is a really smart bike it's by Trek. Um, it's one of the most technologically advanced bikes ever made. Um, it's low maintenance. It's very light in weight. It has hidden brakes. It has like a cool technology pack. Is this thing a pointer? Yeah, back here. Um, it has all kinds of sensors and on board, you know, has speed foils. So you can really, you know, get up to speed, get away from the zombies, stay ahead of those guys. Um, this was a really smart TED talker. His name is Pranav Mystery. He's from MIT Labs, and he came up with an idea for a wearable computer. Um, it's down to about the size of uh, a cell phone now with a camera attached to it. You can see it hanging there on his neck. When he first started with it, it was a big backpack, and he's continually improving it to get it smaller. Um, he calls this the sixth sense. Something like this would be perfect. Zombies are chasing you, and it can give you information about your environment as you look at different things it connects to the internet um, and, and other various networks and it can give you you know heads up information at all times you'll notice he didn't have any kind of weird glass thing as he was wearing it because he can use any surface to project his display and uh, it's capable of dialing out as a cell phone so if you're on your bike and you're pedaling away from the zombies you can kind of just project the phone down call up ask for help. It's pretty cool. It's also very aware of the world. Um, in this image here, I don't know if you can tell, he's looking at a uh, plane ticket. It's on his way to the airport and uh, he looks down at the ticket and it gives him the information that his plane is delayed by 20 minutes. And so he knows, you know, instantly what's around him. So definitely a very convenient technology when you're talking about getting away from zombies. Especially if all I have to do is look down, get some information about that. Now, 
Who was paying attention when I said, visit a big box store? Right? There's no substitute for a bat and a shotgun because when the going de gets tough, only the wily will survive the zombie apocalypse. So you should have stocked up heavily on bullets while you were there. <laughs> so the future is uncertain. You should make it, make it what you want, um, zombies and all. Um, I know that hearing all of this doom and gloom and zombie chasing is kind of weird, but uh, there is good news. And the good news is, is that uh, whatever the problems of the future might be, um, there are always lots of smart people working on new technologies to help you stay ahead of the zombies or whatever it is that's chasing you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>